Where's the front desk? Over here. How can I help you out today? So we're from HR, as you can tell. Yes. And we were wondering if everything's been running smoothly here. We're doing our routine checkup, trying mm -hmm. to make sure everything's going along accordingly. Okay, is there anything specific that y'all came in today to talk about or look for? Uh, yes, we have heard of so several sexual harassment incidents and we were wondering mm -hmm. if you could explain on that. Yeah, so there's actually two nurses that our doctor here has yeah. had some incidents with and I was even just reading a scholarly article right now about six nurses in Australia mm. who experienced sexual harassment at the doctor's office that they were working at and it just follows them with all the impacts that it had on their life and especially while still working at the doctor's office and it just makes me really feel for these girls here so i think it's a good thing that y'all are here to help them out today sure mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and meet with them and see yes okay. hi i'm here with hr and we were just wanted to address the situation and see what happened what are y'all's names i'm nurse for the real i'm nurse Kara. would you two mind telling us a little bit about what happened um, honestly, I just feel like we both kind of encountered some sexual harassment here in the office with Dr. McCall, and it's just gotten a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and I've been here for a while, and I know I'm new here, and something happened like within the first couple of days of me being here, and I just needed to talk to someone about it. So I went and talked to her, and she had said that very similar things happened to her, so that's when I knew that this was an issue and that something needs to happen. I also was able to read a scholarly article that discussed how um, disrespect towards Latinas in the work environment is a norm and how they're used for messengers um, with men and it just leads to continuous disrespect and I feel like that's kind of how we have felt here. Considering we are the only two Hispanic nurses in the office. I'm sorry that you've been put in this position you make to feel this way. Okay, so we brought you here in today because you've been hearing about sexual harassment in the office? No, it's blasphemy. We actually just talked to two of the victims and they told us all about it. But we all know that's a problem. Uh, we have the solution for it. And I actually just read an article about it. It's standpoint theory. And armed with the notion of standpoint theory, constructivists have resources to vindicate an account of objectivity with just the right strength. Given the co commitments of ordinary moral thought and practice. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I admit to it all now. And standpoint theory seems like I could benefit from it. Mm. Um, I've been reading a little bit about it actually too, um, and it talks about how theorists have three main points um, in principle claims for the standpoint theory. Uh, the first is knowledge is social socially situated. Uh, the second is marginalized groups are socially situated in ways that make it more possible for them to be aware of things and ask questions than it is for the non-marginalized. And uh, the third is repeatedly um, particular that um, kind of focuses on power relations um, and within the lives of the marginalized as well. Um, I've also been reading first-hand accounts um, of different um, analysis or people that work with standpoint theory as well. Um, so people like um, Hillary um, Rose, um, people like that, they're, they're feminists. Um, they analyze a lot of these theories and they talk about how the non-marginalized um, and the marginalized have effects and power relation um, abilities um, and then they use the standpoint theory basically to um, show how first hand accounts especially from women are super important and how um, things such as those power relations really do affect the, uh, the marginalized well according to this article I found standpoint theory claims that experiences of marginalization and approval engagement can lead to a standpoint that offers an epistemic advantage within the domain of knowledge. Oh, um, makes sense. Standpoint theory is pretty cool. Well, I'm glad you're so open and receiving of this theory, and thank you for working with us to get through this problem. 
Yes, I won't do it again. So we just got done talking with the doctor here, and we were going over all the details about standpoint theory, and we just wanted to come check in with you two and see what have you guys learned. Well, I've learned a lot about standpoint theory, but additionally, I read a scholarly article by Julia Wood, and she mentioned how in the future to prevent uncomfortable situations from happening using standpoint theory, we can look closely at everyday grounded behaviors towards different genders to better understand how they work to create identities, relationships, and cultural categories. And by paying close attention to these behaviors, we'll be able to um, use them in our everyday lives and add new chapters to our understanding of how gender is constructed and can be changed using standpoint theory. And I totally agree with everything she said and I think that our office could really improve if we start practicing standpoint theory here um, on a daily basis. Now that we've taught you about standpoint theory, we hope that you can use this in any future uncomfortable situations that you may encounter. I feel like I've learned a lot from standpoint theory. I shouldn't be sexually assaulting women anymore in the workplace based upon race or gender. Um, I think that standpoint theory can be used very well in the workplace and that every workplace should be using it. And there's still so much more to learn about standpoint theory, so if you have any more questions, feel free to call us at this number. Standpoint theory! <laughs>